Okay, one more. I'm jumping around all over the place in my garden. Um, this is horseradish. Now, I grow quite a bit of horseradish, not exactly intentionally. I had some plants, I put them in a holding bed. A year later, I moved them where I thought I wanted them, and I ha cannot get rid of them from the holding bed. And now, of course, I, one year I wasn't there when it went to flower, and then it seeded out, and now I have little horseradishes in a number of beds, and it's very, very persistent. So I do actually go quite often and pull the babies out because I'm trying to stop it from spreading. Um, horseradish is a pretty wonderful medicine. It's in the cabbage family. And of course, it is the root that we use in that big tap root, and it can get really big. I've had mine a couple of feet long and several inches across. And um, what I do with that is I peel it. Well, first of all, I work with it outside, not in the kitchen, because there are incredible fumes that come off it. So I do this outside. I'll peel it or scrub it. If it's, if it's, a, fine, if it's a smaller root with a thin skin, I'll just scrub it. If it's a big one, I might peel it because it's tough. And then I shred it in the food processor. I do not do that by hand because I'd need some kind of gas mask to be able to do it. But in the food processor, it's quite manageable outside on the patio. And then I put that in Ziploc bags and I freeze it. And then I just take a handful of that out any time I want to put it into a casserole or a soup or a stir fry or whatever. And freezing actually modulates the flavor. It's not quite as pungent and biting once it's been frozen. It definitely tastes strong, but it's not like biting into raw horseradish would be. There is one remedy that's using the raw horseradish. Um, it's pretty potent. You take a teaspoon of horseradish, shredded, and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and chew them and it opens your sinuses. How many of you have had wasabi in the Japanese restaurants? Yeah. So you know how that can open up the sinuses and make you breathe. First of all, it makes you red, makes you stream a little bit and then all of a sudden your sinuses are totally clear and you can breathe and smell. And so that is an, a remedy, a folk remedy for sinus congestion. It's not going to cure the problem. It's not going to stop you getting blocked up again the next day. But if you are really congested and it's uncomfortable, then a, ta a teaspoon of horseradish and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Sit down, put it in your mouth, and chew. Now, if you don't have fresh horseradish, you can actually use um, a jar of horseradish, prepared horseradish, which is just horseradish and vinegar. So all you really need to do there is take a spoonful of that and chew on it, and it will quickly open up your passages. But the other thing that's really exciting about horseradish, which is quite new research, is that um, it has a lot of compounds in it that stimulate the liver to clear toxins, in particular to clear out some of the estrogens that we're exposed to through our environment. So many things in our environment break down to give estrogen-like effects, plastics, especially soft plastics, many agricultural chemicals. When they um, get out into the water, into the soil, they have, and then into the foods, they have an estrogen-like effect in our body. And this is partly why we're seeing such a rise of estrogen-driven cancers today, which of course isn't just breast cancer. Estrogen drives prostate cancer, more so than testosterone. It drives melanoma. It drives bone cancer. It drives lung cancer. Lung cancer is the fastest growing cancer in women today, not because we're smoking more. In fact, we're smoking less than ever, but because of the estrogens in the environment that are feeding into that cancer. So horseradish helps to clear estrogens through the liver and out of the body. And the very, very best way is through the horseradish sprouts. And you're not likely to have those readily to hand on a daily basis. Um, they're quite pungent if you eat them. I mean, they're not unpleasant, but there's a limit. You're not going to eat masses of them. So that would be an opportunity to go to a capsule-type product where it's been dried and concentrated into the capsule. And that's definitely in my clinical practice when I'm working with cancer patients. Horseradish sprouts in a capsule is something I'm actually using quite a bit. The other thing that goes well there doing a very similar thing is broccoli sprouts. And again, you can buy broccoli sprouts in the grocery stores, but you'd have to eat a lot to get a therapeutic effect. So taking them in capsules, same family, it's the cabbage family. In fact, 
all your cabbage has this property to some extent. So every type of cabbage, your Brussels sprouts, um, you may not be aware of this, but kale, collards, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, red cabbage, green cabbage, they're actually all the same species of plant, but they've been selectively bred to appear very different, just like all dogs are the same species, you know, your Dachshund and your Great Dane are the same species, meaning that they can interbreed, so can all your cabbages. Um, you don't realize that when you're in the garden or the grocery store, they look so very different, but they're all actually the same plant. So they all have these sulfur compounds that help you to clear estrogens through the liver and particularly found in the sprouts. So horseradish is a great favorite in our house. We use it quite liberally. Okay, another one. 